several applications of trusses. Uh, you can observe the application of trusses uh, in good homes, uh, mobile towers, construction of bridges. Everywhere you can observe the application of trusses. So, as an engineer, you, you should be able to calculate the axial forces in the members of trusses. So, there are two methods for calculation of axial forces in the members of trusses. One is method of joints and another one is method of sections. If you want to calculate all the axial forces, then method of joints is preferable. So, when you want to calculate a specific uh, axial force in a member, then method of uh, sections will be preferable. Okay, in this session, I would like to explain method of sections. Uh, with the help of uh, considering an example, so I have considered a truss. Truss is nothing but a system of connected members. Okay, so the AB is a member, uh, BD is a member, CD is a member. So all these are members. These are connected by means of riveted joints or welded joints. Uh, they may be they may be T joints. Okay, I have connected uh, members by means of those joints. And uh, the application of load will be at the joints only. That is the indication of truss. Uh, remember certain things. Here, when you apply method of sections, first of all, you need to consider the section line. How to how to consider the section line? So you can consider section line in any manner, but it should follow certain things. Uh, we have to intersect only three members only. We have to intersect only three members. You can consider section line like this. It is going to intersect three members. Or otherwise you can consider section line like this you can intersect three members it has to intersect only three members and it should pass through the members not through the joints it should pass through the members not through the joints that means it should not pass through B or it should not pass through D like that and uh, third one is the section line whatever you have considered that should divide the truss into uh, two clear separate unconnected portions you, you have to divide the truss into two clear separate unconnected portions such that you need to consider the section line and fourth one is you have to consider moment center such that unnecessary forces are eliminated so I will explain uh, method of sections with the help of this truss so here I would like to consider section line I have to consider section line such that uh, what are maybe the axial force I would like to find so that uh, member should be intersected so here there are uh, one two three members I would like to find axial forces in these members S1 I, I would like to find axial forces in these members one two three so for that I am considering section line like this so when I consider section line that means uh, consider that this is all made up of metal all the members of made up of metal so when I cut this one with hexa so this is going to divide the truss into two uh, uh, separate unconnected parts so when I cut like that so I have to eliminate one of the part so I am considering left hand side part is eliminated so I am uh, denoting that one in the form of dotted line So left hand side uh, which is in terms of dotted line so that is eliminated section and I am removing the section line. What are maybe the member which is cut by section line so that one will be subjected to axial force there you need to represent axial force along member 1 I am considering there is an axial force induced which is S1 and along the member 2 it is S2 and along the member 3 that is S3. So if I want to find S1 axial force, I need to check if I uh, 30 degrees is given in the problem itself. If I want to find S1, I need to eliminate S2 and S3. I have to consider moment center like that. So when we consider moment, moment is nothing but force into perpendicular distance. Moment is force into perpendicular distance. F is the force, D is the perpendicular distance. Suppose if distance is zero, then moment is going to be zero. When can we say the distance is zero means if the force or line of action of force passes through the moment center then moment is going to be zero. Here when we consider uh, S2 and S3 they are both commonly passing through point C. If I consider C as moment center so then I will be able to find S1. If I consider uh, B as moment center I can eliminate S1 and S2 then I can find S3. Suppose if I want to find S2, I have to select a moment center such that these two, the remaining two forces should pass through the uh, particular point. Suppose if I consider, if I want to find the value of S2, I need to consider moment center where S1 and S3 are commonly passing through that. 
So if I consider that one S1 is like this, S3 is like this, both are commonly passing through point A. So if I consider point A, so I will be able to find uh, the moment of S2. Uh, find, I will find the value of S2 here by using once again the moment equation. So which one I need to consider it as moment center. So sigma m equal to 0 is the moment equation. Which one I need to consider it as moment center. So I need to consider uh, moment center such that the remaining two forces S1, S3 should pass through that. So S1 and S3 are commonly passing through point A. So therefore the force or line of action of force should commonly pass through that. So I am considering A as moment center. Sigma m a equal to 0. So when I consider sigma m a equal to 0, I am eliminating forces S1 and S3 and uh, only remaining forces are S2 and T. So this force will be also eliminated by because that is also passing through moment center. Remaining forces are S2 and T. Here when I consider S2, uh, in the earlier case it is a horizontal force. No need to resolve that. But here it is an inclined force. We need to resolve that. So for that, I need to find any one of the angle with respect to vertical axis or with respect to horizontal, I need to find the angle. For that purpose, when I consider here ABE, so it is a triangle in which base is A, height is B. Here also when we consider the triangle ECD, so here also the base is A and height is same, B. So these are nothing but similar triangles. If this angle is going to be 30 degrees, then this angle is also going to be 30 degrees. We know that this is 90 degrees, then this is going to be 60 degrees. So S2 is making an inclination of 60 degrees with vertical. So I can resolve this S2 into two components along horizontal direction and along vertical direction. This is going to be S2 sin 60 and this is going to be S2 cos 60. So now I am having three forces S2 sin 60, S2 cos 60 and this P. So the remaining are eliminated by because they are passing through moment center. First one I am going to consider S2 sin 60. So S2 sin 60 into perpendicular distance. How to find perpendicular distance of the moment center? Draw a line passing through moment center parallel to considered force. Then you can find perpendicular distance which is nothing but BE. Earlier we have evaluated BE which is nothing but a by root 3. So is it clockwise or anti-clockwise? How to find that? Moment center is A. So it is having forces applied at B. So AB is like this. When I apply force at point B, it will be able to rotate in anti-clockwise direction. So anti-clockwise direction means it is positive. When we consider S2 cos 60. So S2 cos 60 into perpendicular distance. Draw a line passing through moment center parallel to considered force. So then A is nothing but perpendicular distance. Right there A. So how to find whether it is clockwise or anti-clockwise. So A, B is like this. A is the moment center. B is the point where the force is applied. So apply the vertical force at B. So it is rotating in anti-clockwise direction. So then this is going to be positive. And the remaining force is P here. So P into perpendicular distance. P into perpendicular distance is uh, Draw a line passing through moment center parallel to conserve force. Perpendicular distance is nothing but A. So here A is horizontal. I am applying vertical force at E. So then it will rotate in anti-clockwise direction which is also positive. There are no more forces. The remaining forces are passing through the considered moment center. So then the moment because of those forces will be zero. So now you need to find S2 value. So take S2 common there. S2 into and take A also common, S2 into A into sin 60 divided by root 3 plus cos 60 is equal to minus P into A. A gets cancelled. S2 into sin 60 divided by root 3 is nothing but if you calculate it is 0 0.5 and cos 60 is also 0 0.5 which is equal to minus p from that s2 is equal to minus p so if there is an inclined force first you need to resolve that for that you need to find the angle and consider uh, the perpendicular distance for each and every force then you need to form the equation like this so whenever you want to find whether the moment is clockwise or anti-clockwise so there are two techniques so consider the member so 
fix the point suppose if this is the moment center fix the point like this or otherwise if this is moment center fix the point like this suppose if the force is applied at this point vertically so then apply there then it is going to rotate in anti clockwise sense or clockwise sense depending upon the application of force or otherwise there is one more technique so moment center is on left hand side and application of force is on right hand side so then the in the direction of force encircle the moment center in the direction of force encircle the moment center how i am doing there anti clockwise in direction suppose force is here and moment center is here so i would like to find whether it is clockwise or anti clockwise in the direction of force force is directed vertically in the direction of force encircle the moment center how i am doing here clockwise so here this is moment center i am applying force in this direction it is going to rotate in clockwise direction thank you for watching for more videos please do subscribe my channel the turning point thank you all